Hello, I'm Frost and welcome to another Alliance Spotlight. In this episode, I'm going to be talking to Marcus Pandekane, who is the Alliance leader of Vindictive. Now, Vindictive have only been around a couple of years, but as I'm sure you will see during this interview, they have had a busy time. So, here we go. Hello, Marcus. So, welcome to Alliance Spotlight and uh, delighted to have Vindictive here, <laughs> especially as like a couple of weeks ago, I said you guys were disappearing and I was completely wrong about it. So, it's awesome that you're here and uh, hopefully you'll be able to set the record straight. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me. I'm glad that we could sh show up and, and talk about ourselves a little bit and uh, and show that we haven't disappeared. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> right, so I think the best way to start this off is uh, is really to talk about where Vindictive came from. I mean, so how long have you been in the game? And what have you been up to? And how did you end up where you are today? So Vindictive itself is actually older than I am as a, as a player. Um, it started about two and a half years ago uh started with a group that was in high sec and they said you know what we want to we want to start our own alliance and we want to make it pvp focused but also a place where people from anywhere and everywhere can join and make it about family and make it about the relationships that we build with people um, and so that group got together created the alliance with a couple of corps and um continued forward on, on building Vindy. And mm -hmm. then after that, they had joined, uh, let's see it. Look, we we actually joined Winterco in Detroit at first. Um, okay. After Winterco, uh, there were some disagreements that, that led to us moving to become a legacy alliance and yeah. living in Immensi. Okay, so I mean, you mentioned sort of a couple of years. So obviously that time when you were in Winter Coalition, uh, that was the time when sort of they were fighting Fire Coalition and uh, and Legacy as well, and then they kind of ended up moving northwest. So was your decision to stay behind more important than moving with Winter Coast? So that's that why you kind of ended up with Legacy. So my understanding from from what I was told uh, is that we were actually placed in charge of, of securing the 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 retreat route for for Winter Co and did that. Mm -hmm. And during that time, there was some kind of disagreement or, or something that happened that led the leadership at the time to decide that continuing to follow Winter Co. and go with Winter Co. wasn't a, a viable option. So we, okay. we we looked for a relationship with Legacy and, and formed one. Okay, and so then with Legacy, then you, sort of, you got some new territory and then you had the, the wonderful thing of the move up, right? So, which we've been talking about a lot recently with the end of the, the war between Pappy and the Imperium. Yeah, moving all your stuff is never easy, right? And especially as a kind of a young alliance, that must have been a bit of a, a, bit of a headache. It, it definitely was. I, I personally, like I, I moved my stuff to get down there, but at the same time, moving an entire alliance and then being in charge of moving the whole alliance and getting everyone out and moved is definitely not something that I am in any hurry to uh, <laughs> to do again, <laughs> anytime soon. Uh, trust me, I, I have moved so much, you wouldn't believe it. I've probably gone almost all the way around the map and back again. So uh, you get very good at it. And once you've yep. got yourself a couple of jump freighters, you, you know, you're all good and you know, you know how to move all your stuff around. But yeah, it's a it's great experience to get. So talking of, of, of uh, Winterco and then obviously Legacy, uh, now, Winterco, Winterco were primarily a kind of a Chinese-speaking alliance to begin with, or the coalition, and then obviously have grown up into a much bigger group. So, uh, you know, because Winterco was such a multi-language group, and so is Legacy, does that kind of fold in with how vindictive it is? Are you a particular kind of language group or time zone, or, or does it work very differently from that? So Vindy's actually, um, we were congratulated by uh, the leader of the Mangoes, Fulcrum, and, and others because we were one of the first groups that, that had a true Chinese time zone, large presence, but led by Europeans and Americans. And that kind of follows through for, for all of our, our different languages and people that are part of Vindy. Um, we have a large contingent of Germans, a contingent of Russians, a contingent of Chinese, and the diversity is actually one of our greatest strengths. Yeah, I, I can also see how that, that why why the whole PIBC thing came about with, you know, obviously, Army of Mango, you know, our Chinese time zone, uh, then obviously you've got Evictus, 
who are more in the US TZ, if I remember correctly. So uh, you guys kind of slot in nicely there and add that kind of that third time zone while still having the communication channels with people like Army of Manga. Yep. When when the opportunity to become a part of PABC came up, it was it was perfect for us because, like you said, it, we have the Chinese contingent, we have the US EU contingent, and so we kind of fit in to all of the realms that they fit into without having to take on one entirely by ourselves. Okay, and and so uh, being part of the, of these various coalitions, so this is kind of your third coalition now. So you you're kind of building up that uh, that uh, knowledge base rather quickly. What 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 do you think is an alliance you have learned from from kind of being involved with these big groups, and and how do you think that's helped Vindictive? So, I would say, when it comes to working with the large groups, everyone everyone is out to help everyone else we in the coalition everyone does have their own specific priorities that you always have to be um cognizant of you always have to be aware of why everyone wants to be a part of the group that they're in and work together towards those goals but a biggest thing that we have learned is that it is very important to find people that you have commonalities and common goals uh with so that communication and all of the basics are covered effectively without without there being disagreements that cause chaos and needing to move to the next group. Yeah, and obviously that's that's one of the big differences between coalitions and alliances, you know, that the coalition is, is as a big group is, is, is a military power, an industrial power, but then, you know, you have the individual cultures of the alliances and you know, they, they are normally very, very different. So, you know, how would, how would you describe your, the culture of Vindictive and how does it tie in with, with working with people like Evictus and Army of Mango in this particular instance? Well, Vindy's culture is, I would say we are middle of, middle of the road when it comes to PvP versus PvE. Um, mm -hmm. We very much enjoy going out and getting a good fight. But at the same time, we also enjoy going out and crabbing and, and sitting in works and doing uh, industry stuff or, or exploring or whatever else. And so the culture of PIBC, the, the, the Chinese are, are very, very good at whatever they do. When they choose to do something, they're going to do it 100%. Yeah, they're all in. Similar, very similar right. to the Russian-speaking players. You know, Correct. I've, I've been in Legion of Death fleets, and they are hardcore when it comes to that. And they can crab as well. So, right. yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yep. And so for us, um, our, our motto, our way of living, the reason that we say, hey, this is worth, your, Vindy is worth your time, come join us, is mm -hmm. is because we we believe that real life comes first, but we also believe that we're going to be a family and a group that does things together. And if we're going to choose to do something, we're going to do it well. If we're going to show up to a fight, we're going to show up with as many numbers as we can. If we're going to go out and and mine ice, let, let's go out and mine ice with everybody. Okay, so so would, um, would I be correct in saying that, that kind of in the culture of your alliance, you know, you prefer a jack of all trades rather than a master, you know, somebody who is going to be out crabbing and then jump into a defense fleet and a strat up and stuff like that? Or do you prefer your people to be kind of more focused? Would you prefer those kind of players? I think um, preference wise, I, I would prefer an all around player. At the same time, there are people who are part of Vindy who are solely PVP focused that when I open up Z kill, I know that the first thing on there is going to be them killing something. Um, and then there are also people that, unless I unless I mess with them and say, hey, no, I really need you to show up. Like, can you plus your your buddies, can, can you show up for this one thing? And and the big thing for us is we're all here to play a game. So do what you find fun. But in order for us all to have fun, we all have to work together to defend our space or build that thing. And so that's really. The, the all around jack of all trades player is what I look for um, mm -hmm. in terms of corpse or or individuals solely because when you have somebody going all PVP or all PVE, it's harder to move them more towards the middle. Yeah, it's also very hard to satisfy those people. You know, if you're in a time of war and someone is really focused on you know, cracking rocks, 
then they get very upset and, and vice versa. You know, if it's constant peace and you know, there isn't much roaming activity at that time because it's just not the opportunity, then you know, your PvP focused players can become very kind of uh, upset and, and despondent essentially and then you'll end up moving on. So I understand where you're coming from with that. Very much so. Okay, so um, so now we, I mean, obviously standings wise, you know, let's talk about you know your friends and enemies. You know, how how have you? Um, who are your enemies right now? Just for anybody that's kind of not up to date on what's going on with the, the, with the alliance map as we speak, and uh, who who have been interesting friends and enemies in the past? That would be, I think, that would be an excellent question. So enemies wise, we we have tried our best to not make true enemies of anyone. Um, obviously, uh, we we were a part of of the war, and so goons goons would probably put us on the list of enemies because we were a part of Legacy during the war. Um, however, we we don't we don't hold any any malice against them. Um, we did a thing; it didn't work. We moved on. Um, and so, I would say uh, much more important would be focusing on our friends because. The, without some of the friends that we have made along the way um vindy would have gone the way that many other smaller alliances that were part of legacy went and and ended up having to disband and so uh people like the army of mangoes um fulcrum was instrumental in helping us get out of immensi and evacuate uh so were xix at the uh, and fire um, both of those groups came to our aid and and helped us to defend to, to get as much of our stuff out as we possibly could. And so I would definitely put them on the list of people that that in the past have been friends. Interestingly also, enough, I'm yeah. sorry. Interestingly, go ahead, go ahead. interestingly enough, um, currently uh, Fire Coalition and PIBC are kind of at odds um, yeah. in terms of what we are what our goals are and what we're doing. And so hopefully down the road, um, we can rekindle that friendship. Uh, but for now, it's a game and we're, we're, we're playing the game. Absolutely. I mean, I, I've been in you know, lots of different fights and I always shoot on reds. And one day those reds might be my friends and other days they're not, you know, and, and it's just the way the game plays, you know, and, and there's a big difference between, I, I think maybe I shouldn't have used the word enemies, but more opponent, you know, that, you know, you can be shooting your friends because you know them in real life or you've been in, in alliance with them in the past and now they're just on the other side of the uh, of the colour spectrum when, you, when you're out and when, when you're looking at the overview. I think that's probably the best way to put it, right? It definitely. I mean, especially post-war or depending on, on which side you're taking, the goons say the war is still going on because they have not ended it yet, which is fair. Mm -hmm. um, but post-war, I would say, looking at the standings and the changes, everyone is going to be shooting at their once was friends at some point, mm -hmm. sometime soon. Yeah, <laughs> but then that's, that's why, you know, I get to do a, a show every week and talk about what's going on with the alliances because it changes, you know, that's the whole idea is that it's not the same thing every week, you know, that the, there are shifts in, in, in the political landscape, which creates new opportunities for uh, for conflict and conflict is good for Eve as is crabbing and, and every other part of it you know the more active the game is you know, the more people log in and uh, the more communities grow as a consequence of that so um, talking of communities so you know you described that you, know, you have people from you know different languages uh, and from different time zones uh, how, how do you kind of manage all of that and maintain kind of the vindictive family when you've got kind of such disparate kind of groups within your own alliance? Well, I would say one of the ways is I don't sleep. Um, <laughs> every uh, at 3 a.m. I wake up and answer Discord messages and then fall back asleep. Um, but <laughs> realistically, what it has been for me, because uh, for me as an alliance leader, uh, when I when I became the alliance leader, I was still a in terms of alliance, relatively new Eve player. So I was learning leading alliance along with understanding the different cultures and how they play the game. And yeah. so for us, 
the biggest thing has been, and for me specifically, the biggest thing has been learning each culture's play style and how they play the game and why they play the game. And then making why they do it a part of our identity while also saying, okay, we understand, you know, that, that this is how you do it, but let's tone that down a little bit because that's not the way that the other two thirds think is okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so you see, so you got to you, you try to find a balance to create that harmony between the various groups and their, and their play styles and so forth. Yeah, it's very much Vindi has become very much a melting pot of different cultures, but everyone also still maintains their own their own uniqueness as well. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, just because an alliance isn't that old, it doesn't necessarily mean that the players aren't very well seasoned. So I'd assume that, would I, actually, I wouldn't assume that. Let me ask you, do, do the corps that, that form the alliance, are they all mostly kind of new corps or are there some kind of really old school corporations that are kind of proper, proper vets in there as well? So we, we were founded by some older corps. Um, those corps have either merged into other corps within Vindi and formed new ones, or in some cases left uh, the grass is always greener syndrome. Um, uh -huh. And so we do have some older players. Um, when I became the leader of Vindi, something that was very important to me was having a council of those older players that, that know something more than I do that I can rely on and talk to. And so within our corpse, we also have those older players, those wise ones that we go to and say, hey, so we need this. What's your insight? Okay, so you have a council of elders. Yes, exactly. Our, our council of elders <laughs> consults on a regular yeah. basis. Um, mm -hmm. And and it, it's worked out very well for us because it, we all temper each other and have different things that we are strong at. Okay. So, um, you know, based, based on all of that and, uh, you know, you've had a kind of a tumultuous few years, you know, bouncing around and, and having all these experiences and, and being pushed into kind of, you know, one of the biggest wars of, of, of Eve ever. Um, where, where do you go now? Well, how, how do you see or how would you like the future for Vindictive to play out? What is it that you think is a good path forward? So something that we're going to continue focusing on is our diversity and, and getting groups, uh, uh, groups that don't necessarily want to be a part of their traditional cultures, big block. Um, that is something that, that we've had success with. And so incorporating those groups and providing the atmosphere where they can do whatever they want is, is important because that's what players want to be able to do. But also one of the focuses that we have right now is on growth and expansion of our PVP abilities and our our numbers. Um, the war took its toll on everybody in terms of how many people want to form up for a fleet five times a day every day. And so we we are focusing on expanding our ability to defend ourselves and do our own things. Um, independently from PIBC and and that leadership as well, so that we can okay. go on a roam, so that we can go on a roam and yeah. do things <laughs> that that all the players want to do with large enough numbers to make a difference. When your neighbors are okay. goons, you're not going on a roam with five people. <laughs> very true, very true. So, so you know, we talked about that expansion. Is that expansion kind of? Are you looking to do that through acquiring new corporations or? you know, encouraging your existing corporations to bring in new players? Or Both. Um, mm -hmm. We've we've employed a couple of strategies. Uh, our, our current corporations are looking for individuals or, or corporations that might want to join. Um, I don't mm -hmm. speak every language, but we do, like I've said several times, we have multiple different languages that are spoken, so they can reach out to a much more diverse group than just myself or just yeah. our recruiter. So we're focusing with the corpse on growing the corpse individually um, and then also bringing in new corpse. We we have put uh, we have someone that has been in charge in the past, but with the war recruiting corpse was not the easiest of things because no one no one was moving anywhere um, after the war with all the shakeups 
the ability to recruit corps that maybe weren't happy with the way the war ended, with with the way things happened, um, or that are just looking for a change to be in a smaller group where they, they feel more like a, a person than a number. Um, either way, we're willing to talk to and take in anyone um, as long as, you know, they're not spies and they, they aren't looking to, <laughs> to just yeah. just they're drop on supers. Machines. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, one, one question actually that, that does spring to mind, um, it's kind of, I left it a little bit late, but it is relevant, is that um, how do you manage in fleets? You know, the fact that you've got so many different kind of languages, is there a, a particular language of fleets or do they, do you create multiple fleets in different languages? So um, one of the things that is in a way a bonus is that Chinese time zone is pretty different from other time zones. Um, mm -hmm. And so the Chi our Chinese group actually has their own group of FCs, most of which uh, speak English fluently enough mm -hmm. that we can converse via Discord while a fleet is out with an English speaking FC. Um, yeah. So we we have a couple of different communication platforms because not everything works in every country. And so we will communicate back and forth on the back end and have probably two different fleets, an English and, and a Chinese fleet, just to make it okay. easier for everyone. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, for those those big, big ops where you've got kind of mass mass numbers, then, you, then it's easier to kind of split two, two fleets rather than try and sort of translate on the fly. Kind of thing. Exactly. It's it's very hard for for the the Chinese or English FC, if they know Chinese, to, to translate back and forth and still run the fleet effectively. So they also will have a translator for them that will translate things over to yeah. each other if needed as well. Okay, awesome. So, um, I mean, from my point of view, I've kind of covered everything that I can think of. Is there anything else that, that you want to add that, you know, about Vindictive? I mean, something that I say anytime I talk about Vindictive um, is that, from my experience, uh, Eve is hard. Um, Eve, Eve will throw you loops just like real life, and we joke within Vindy that Eve is real life because of all of the ways that things turn out and go. And so one of the things that is that I personally love about Vindy and that has kept us going is the sense of of belonging and family that we get with people. And and that's it's kind of like growing up in a small town. You may not want to live there um, when you're growing up, but you appreciate it when you don't have it. And Vindy very much, I feel, is one of those places that you appreciate when you don't have it. Um, is that closeness and that that camaraderie that that we have even across time zones brilliant awesome i think that was a perfect way to wrap it up thank you thank you marcus that was brilliant so um i, I think we'll probably end it there as we ended on on such a positive note i think that is a perfect time to say thank you very much awesome well thank you for the opportunity to come talk to you and uh i look forward to to watching you every week like i have been you were instrumental <laughs> when i first started running things in learning the landscape of how eve worked I was watching your videos and going oh hey this is a <laughs> okay. good explanation oh, <laughs> excellent i'm delighted to hear that that's uh, quite the compliment thank you all right let's uh, let's end there then and i will say bye bye and until next time and there we go. So thank you very much to Marcus for coming along for the interview. As always, at the end of the show, it just comes to me to say thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications. And uh, I will see you either on a weekly update or another Alliance Spotlight. All right, that's all for me for now. Bye.